In this video, I'll explain DRS virtual machine and group affinity rules. When we enable DRS on a cluster of ESXi hosts, we're going to allow DRS to automatically take virtual machines and move them around. And this could potentially create some unexpected results. So for example, in our slide here, we see four ESXi hosts and we have two domain controllers running as virtual machines. And at the moment they're on different ESXi hosts. When we enable fully automated DRS, we're going to allow virtual machines to be automatically vMotion from host to host. So we have the possibility that domain controller two and domain controller one could end up on the same ESXi host. And if that ESXi host were to fail, well, now we've lost both of our domain controllers. So when we automate certain things like DRS, when we allow virtual machines to be automatically moved around, we may need to think about what could potentially go wrong and create some rules that govern this behavior. An anti-affinity rule would force these virtual machines to remain on different hosts. So that's definitely something you should consider for any virtual machines that serve a redundant purpose, such as domain controllers. We can also create affinity rules that are enforced on a wider scale. So for example, we could create DRS groups of hosts. Okay, on the left hand side, we have three ESXi hosts that have been grouped together as our production hosts. On the right hand side, we have three ESXi hosts that are our development hosts. And we can also create groups of virtual machines as well. And we can say all of our production VMs must run on the production hosts. Well, what if those ESXi hosts fail? Now I've created a group of virtual machines and a group of ESXi hosts, and I've created a group affinity rule that says the production VMs must run on the production hosts. If those production hosts were to fail, those virtual machines would not restart on the development hosts. Now we do have another way that we can set up a group affinity rule. The rule that I've just described is called a required affinity rule. That means that these virtual machines must run on the production hosts and they cannot run on the development hosts for any reason. I could create a preferential affinity rule that would have a similar effect. However, preferential affinity rules can be violated if a high availability event occurs. So what does that mean? Well, in that circumstance, if the three production hosts were to fail, high availability could actually restart these virtual machines on the development hosts. 